I guess you may have heard or you understood that last year in July, so impulse flew over the Pacific, five days, five nights, uh, the longest flight ever done by any type of airplane with a single pilot on, uh, on board and using only sun as a source of uh, energy. And when I did this flight from Japan to Hawaii, people started to ask me a couple of questions. They asked me, I mean, aren't you afraid from this duration? Aren't, are, you going to be, are you going to fall asleep and never wake up? But I looked at it completely differently. And for this, you have to realize that when I was a boy, something like you know, 10, 12 years, 12 years old, I was extremely inspired by uh, pioneers who made the aviation, the aviation we know, uh, we know today. And I told myself that some days, you know, I need to sit in one of these cockpits and try something completely different. So for me, this flight was something special. So what I did was, and what I understood, and what I felt was that five days were going to be too short. Uh, too short to go through this experience I wanted to, uh, to make. I wanted and I needed to enjoy every minute of it. And when I arrived in, uh, in Hawaii, I arrived around 10 o'clock at night uh, over the islands, and I decided to land at 6 o'clock the following morning to be able to fly another eight hours, I mean, to enjoy, knowing that this would be, you know, soon becoming history, and I needed to enjoy this uh, very, very special moment. The second question that people were asking, aren't you afraid, in fact, to be drawn down in the Pacific? I mean, to, to be lost, to die? And I tell you, we are not crazy people. But I think we prepared ourselves uh, extremely well. And when you prepare for the worst, when you prepare for the worst, it's a way, in fact, to put the anxiety away. And it's a way to be less afraid about what may, uh, what may uh, happen. And let me tell you a story which happened three years ago when I flew from uh, uh, Washington to New York with the first airplane. At noon, I was flying over the, uh, the Atlantic coast, uh, waiting, in fact, to get the possibility to go to uh, Kennedy Airport, and a helicopter came and, uh, to make some pictures of the, uh, of the airplane. And as soon as it got close, it told me that I was losing part of the undercover of the, uh, of the wing. So they made pictures, sent it to the control center. Of course, it was shown to the, uh, the engineers. And the first things I got from the engineers a few minutes later was that they were surprised that the wing did not disintegrate yet. A few seconds of excitement, as you can imagine. So I prepared, in fact, to jump out. I organized the cockpit, and I went through the drill, in fact, what I had to do in case I needed to jump out. How to jettison the cockpit, how to fall, how to open the parachute, how to get into the water. And I told myself, if you have to do it, you will know how to do it. So if this happened, you better enjoy it, because you don't have the possibility to jump out of an airplane every day, especially over the Atlantic. But I told you, this calmed me down completely. And I was able, in fact, to complete the flight another nine hours until I was cleared to land at uh, Kennedy uh, late, uh, late at night. But what it told us is that you know, when you are well prepared, it helps to put the pressure away. Uh, it, helped, it helped to go into the unknown with a different mindset. And even being very conscious about every step. And when we are very conscious about every step, in fact, the unknown becomes even attractive. So that's what we experience. And that's what we experience as, a, as a explorers. And I think everyone in this situation going into the unknown can do exactly the same. Thank you very much.